lawsuit is the Solution for Enterprise-Wide Procurement Program. It's a premier government-wide acquisition contract providing federal agencies access to the latest IT product solutions. In this presentation, Al will look at how the Open Trusted Technology Provider Standard is being used to achieve product integrity and supply chain security. So a ple a please a warm open group welcome for Al Marshall.
for the Open Group folks, the ERC folks, why are we here at the Open Group? So soup has been, in one way or another, associated with the Open Group or its predecessor since 1992. So you can see almost since you know, soup's inception. Um, you know, Unix is, is one of Joanne's uh, you know, favorite, favorite topics. You know, when, I, when I first started, it's one of the reasons she liked me. I actually came, even though I started out as a COBOL programmer in the 80s when everybody used mainframes, I was like one of the two or three people in the world seemed like in the world at that time, but actually did it in, under Unix, of course, now it's, everybody uses Linux for everything. So, she, you know, she was real happy I was not a big Microsoft fan when, uh, when I came aboard in 2000. Uh, moving on, uh, you soup recognizes the importance of IT standards, and not just the Open Group standard, we're going to hit on, you know, ISO 20243 as, as we go through this, uh, but also uh, other, you know, FedRAMP, uh, TAA, uh, Energy Star, EP, and, you know, anything else the, uh, the government throws at us, we are you know, we make every effort to incorporate into our program and provide information. You'll hear me say this a million times during this presentation. You are customers to help them make their buying decisions. Uh, we do actively support the Open Group and its, its activities. Uh, I think Dennis Taylor is actually in here, but Dennis Taylor has been with the Open Group Security Forum for as long as I can remember you know, working with Dennis Taylor. Uh, you know, as, as soup has evolved and become more, you know, I've been uh, able to uh, become part of of the open group contingent from soup. And then just last, uh, just last November, uh, Randy Gitteron also became uh, another participant. Yeah, so we're up to about four counting Joanne, who of course is, is on the board as, as well, of, of soup uh, team, name, team members who are also open group participants. Uh, last bullet there, and we'll mention this again as, as we get into the ODS part of the presentation. So soup along with DOD is, is are, are the two government entities that actually participated in the creation of the of the standard. So once again, why are we here? We have an annual PM meeting. It's it's a contractual requirement for all of our, our contract holders. So we have the 140 program managers, our PMs, that are here this week. Uh, not only to you know hear about soup, but also to hear about the Open Group and hopefully you know become you know, more involved and, and maybe even seek out the ISO 20243 certification. Uh, as, as we mentioned before, this has been a vision of Joanne you know, for years to actually have this you know, transpire. Uh, and at the bottom there, oh, we have a typo. So it's ISO 20243. Did not catch that during my proofreading. Sorry about that. We're with a new one there. So you know, as, as, as mentioned there at the bottom, you know, this conference hopefully will assist you know, soup in, in, in uh, working with our contract holders to have them become you know, ISO 20243 certified. Flying away. So what does SOUP do? So it is from, you know, hopefully for the Open Group customers, this will be some new information for our SOUP contract holders. Hopefully you already know this. So our primary goal you know, of, of the you know, now 80-member staff of SOUP is to manage the SOUP contracts and the contract holders. Uh, next, we need action between government and industry. So, so what does that mean? Obviously, you know, we, have, we have industry partners. You know, not only do we have 140 contract holders, we have 6,500 manufacturers. We have customers. We have you know, uh, standards organizations. You know, so we actually work, you know, recognize that all of our stakeholders you know, have a say in our success, and we continue to try to reach out to as, to as many groups a, as possible. You know, in fact, we just stood up maybe three, four months ago an industry team that's focused on, on the Cisco's, the Oracle's, and those type of companies, as, as well as the emerging technologies you know, of the world. So, and we you know, previously worked with our contract holders, obviously with our customers. Uh, facilitate the acquisition process. You know, that's from everything from you know having a, a helpline that's you know staffed 12 hours a day, uh, online chat. You know, taking one business day or less to get, less to get back if you have a uh, you send in a help ticket. Uh, you know, we go out, we have two sets of, of teams that do outreach. We have one that concentrates mostly on, on customers. We also have our, our strategic uh, solutions team that goes and, and meets with the you know, CIOs, uh, the higher level folks. You know, establishes those strategic relationships. You know, works on the complex solutions, the, uh, the big dollar solutions. Uh, recommended best practices. You know, of course, you know, this is a part of it. We're recommending we use some of our online tools. Uh, last bullet there is, is one of the another important one. Inform the customer. Uh, soup is not assisted acquisition, so soup itself does not make any orders for any of our government customers. 
you know, so what we do provide is information, you know, information that they can make the best decision possible. You know, uh, is this TAA compliant? Is the product EP compliant? Is 20243 compliance? You know, we are in the business of providing information. Uh, if I forget, you know, later, uh, every time an RFP comes through suit, we provide our customers with a verification file. So all of the information is presented right there for them to view right when they're ready to make their buying decisions. Uh, a couple of SCRM definitions here, and, and hopefully people are familiar with these. You know, uh, our supply chain, you know, th these are Joe Ram's definitions, so I'm going to try to remember them as, as best as, as possible. Uh, just basically, you know, the route a product takes in Providence, the chain of custody from its uh, inception, you know, as, as an idea, design, through disposal, and all the, the people, the entities, the organizations, the processes that touch it along the way. Uh, the supply chain risk management component, so you have your supply chain, and these are the, the physical uh, transportation, you know, any other type of, of risk associated with you know, the product, and taking steps to, to mitigate you know, those risks. And you, you have you can evaluate the risk, prioritize the risk, and, and take a mitigation strategy you know, as, as best as, pos as possible, and you know, based on you know, how much money you have and, and you know, what risk you can take to uh, you know, the organization. You know, if it's a test system, maybe it's not as, as important as a, your centralized inter you know, total agency network and communication systems. Uh, counterfeit and taining. So, uh, actually, I'll, we have them much better explained on one of the other slides. I'll slide by those. Authorized reseller, what that means to suit, simply is, is the OEM, the, the company that actually makes the product, recognizes you as a legitimate reseller of the product, and would consider any sale to a U.S. government entity a, a legitimate, supportable sale. And you know, that's a very short definition of what we consider an authorized reseller. I'm sure there's, there's many others, and folks seem to probably do hour-long presentations on just what authorized reseller means. Uh, gray market versus black market. Yeah, so, so gray market, you know, unintended, unauthorized channels. You know, black market is just totally outside of, of, the, of the bounds of, of any normal distribution channel. Uh, SCRM standards. Uh, you know, it's a hot topic. Cybersecurity, of course, is one of the hottest topics in you know, the cyber world, the government world. Every, everybody's world, really, since you know, now we're all consumers of, of, of cyber services on a pretty much you know, hourly, minute, minute by minute basis anymore. Uh, so you know, lots of, of, of folks in the U.S. government are, are interested in, in this. Uh, NIST, obviously, you know, SOOP, you know, with the Open Group. Uh, just last Friday, I, I read an article from GSA where they're you know, charged with looking into the cybersecurity risk with, within the federal government. You know, ass assessing you know programs and and coming up with with hopefully you know solutions to uh, the risks they that are posed to the federal government through you know the purchase and community use of, of, of ICT type products. All right, so here's where it gets a little tricky for me because this is before Al's time at Open Group. So you know, I, I, I the online wiki page says 2010. Joanne's slides say 2009. So I'm saying 2009 because because I have to. So Open Group started in, in 2009 with the uh, you know, looking for the uh, the so, oh, so the solution, the yes, and accreditation for you know, how to solve the, the supply chain problem. Uh, you know, based on, on the government's you know move away from you know standard customized solutions into a plug and play world. So you know, if, if I'm plugging you know server rack, server rack, sh 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 plugging these things in. You know, how do I know that I'm getting a genuine product? How do I know this product is, is what it says it is? You know, as, as, as we move to that world as opposed to you know, just, you know, I got an integrator and they do all my stuff for me. You know, how does the customer identify you know, a good product from a bad product? You know, is, is there any way to, to help them along that, uh, along that path? You know, so some smart folks got together and said, whoa, it sounds like a good idea. Let's, let's establish, and I always love the, the best of breed word or best in class. Like, not sure what that means, but you know, it sounds good when we're doing it, and you know, create a, a solution. So here's a fancy little diagram there. So we mentioned before, you know, a tainted product, so you know, what we consider a tainted product. You 
channel. So it comes from the normal supply channel, it comes to the manufacturer, but, but somehow, somewhere along the way, something bad happened to it. Uh, maybe some malware was placed on it. Uh, maybe a driver was, was updated or, or changed. Maybe some malicious code was, was sent there. Uh, the, you know, it's a communication equipment. So it, it just phones home on a, on a regular basis and just sends out some information. You know, so, so what's the risk you know, involved here? You know, obviously you have you know, security risk. You may have performance risk. Uh, you know, if someone switches out a, a new part for an old part or a non-standard part or a, a compromised part, uh, you could obviously have intellectual property risk, national security risk, corporate uh, security risk, PIA leaks, or PII leaks, I'm sorry, uh, et cetera. You know, so you know, lots, of, lots of bad things can happen if, you know, if the supply chain is compromised and a maliciously tainted product is, is acquired. Uh, bottom part here, we have counterfeit products. So who's ever walked the streets of, of New York and, and seen the uh, $50 Louis Vuittons on the, on the corner? So who here thinks they're actually really Louis Vuittons? You know, so it's, you know, it's label says that, right? And you get it back home and you're all excited, look, I got a brand new, and then you know, a couple weeks later you realize, oh, it inferior your workmanship, inferior your materials, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't hold up to the, to the standards that uh, that we expect from, from that brand. Uh, pretty much the same applies to IT. So, I mean, just because it says well, a Dell or something on the outside, you actually know is it a real Dell? Is it you know, are they used components? Are they old components? Refurbished components? The actual components? You know, inside. Who knows? Uh, had a short customer story here for you. We uh, had a customer send in a help ticket once, and uh, we're like, oh, this is nice. You know, what does it say? Oh, soups processes are can't say the bad word are not good. Yeah, so we contact them and say, well, why are you saying that? Well, we did an RFQ on soup and we got we got five qu qu quotes back and they were all like for this particular pocket about ten thousand dollars. Okay, okay, well that, that's normal. Oh no, we, we found it on eBay in Thailand for five thousand. <laughs> all right, well you know what? If you're going to put that piece of communications equipment in in your agency's system. And you've not to cast aspersions at you know eBay or Thailand, but you know if if you think that is is, is a real system, and you, you you're willing to take that risk, then then so be it. You know, so that obviously that was that was our counsel to them. You know the old adage if it sounds too good to be true it probably is. You know so our contract holders are all competing for the business. So if there's a bullseye of prices in a ten thousand dollar range and you can find them on eBay for five thousand, well, yeah you get what you get. Uh, the OTP is standard itself, so you can see here on the, on the slides from 2013. Uh, it's a set of it says prescriptive requirements, so if, if you take the time to read it, it's the shalls, shall nots, has tos, and, 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 and such. Uh, left hand side, I'm going to point to this like you all can see it, of the, maybe see it as your left too, of the chart. Yeah, this is, is it the uh, provider itself, the OEM, so this is their design. Uh, manufacturing, sourcing of the materials, etc. You know, this is their part. Uh, the supply chain part is, is really where soup may become involved. You know, the product is already made. So how does it get from, from the company that makes it into the hands of the end user? You know, what path does it take? You know, what's the chain of custody? You know, the provenance that it goes from, you know, from point A to point B. Uh, bottom part here, I think we already mentioned that, right? There's, there's two areas of development. So we'll slide up to the next part. Which is a blank slide. Oh, I didn't realize it was like fancy stuff like that. Wow. Who, who knew Joanne set it up that way? So there's there's a fancy stuff like there. So how do we accomplish our mission? You know, this is more of the open group part. So uh, you know, my story is this. You know, when I, my first open group we we had was at Newport Beach, at the hotel across from the Maserati dealer, which was you know, kind of cool for for a, you know a boy from South Baltimore. Maserati deal right across the street. It wouldn't give me a test drive, but so you know we have a bunch of folks in a room, and, and you know they're looking at, at these five uh, five goals, and it's you know a veritable who's who of, of of IT. You have you have Cisco, you have Oracle, you have Dell, you have HP, you have IBM, you have Microsoft, uh, Huawei, and I'm sorry if I forgot some others, but you know all, all these these titans of the IT industry. So you know, I come in with Joanne, and I'm all excited, and I'm like, what am I going to do when I get there, and how can I participate? And she's like, well, we just sit and watch. And you know, for those of you who know me, that's like not normally my style. So I'm saying, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll follow your lead. You know, so sure enough, all these companies are growling and back and forth, and 
oh, we shall, no, we shouldn't do this. And I'm like, wow. And then about an hour passes, and there's poor Sally, and she's taking notes and trying to keep 20 type A personalities in, in check. And, and then, you know, there's, there's silence, and she turns to, you know, Joanne and, and Don Davidson from, uh, from DOD, and it's like, and what does the governor think? And thumbs up, thumbs down. And then we moved on to the next, uh, the next issue, and we went back to typing our laptops until the next... Uh, Next time the government you know, input was was needed, so there was there was years of that. I thought you know, this, I had the slides in different order, and uh, we'll, we'll get to the years of, of stuff in a second. So what was the final outcome? So we, in 2013 we actually have the, the first version of the standard. So we have a cool little diagram here, and it's we have some buy with confidence here. So we, we have our trusted sellers, you know, the people who follow the the supply chain rules, the people who are certified. And then we have the untrusted you know, guys in the bottom. We have the Ebays of, of the world and stuff. And you know, procuring stuff from, from gray market, you know, out of out of band, uh, you know, out of normal supply chain you know, companies, you know, the risks associated with that. And on the right hand side we, we have our, our happy customers because you know, you know they went through uh, you know, trusted providers and got a, a good solution. So now I want to get to, you know, to the, the part of you know, after our first meeting in, in Newport Beach, there was a bunch of other meetings, uh, a lot of phone calls, even one uh, unscheduled, you know, out of out of uh, sequence meeting at, at IBM and Bethesda. But eventually, in 2015, the 20243 standard was published. So as you can see here, uh, we have eight of our 140 contract holders so far have went through the certification process. So one of the reasons to have this this presentation here and to have this co-mingled meeting was to hopefully you know, encourage more of our contract holders to, to follow that path. Uh, Soup's goal on FR19 is, is as we work with our, our government customers to be recommended they use the, the ISO standard as a possible discriminator. You know, when you're looking at your, you know, as, as I said, our, our large dollar, highly complex or highly secure or, or essential procurements. And here's a picture of the of our website with said yeah, open loop certification. All right, so then we're going to bounce back to soup again. So we, oh, we had a little soup, little open group back to soup. So what do we advise our customers when we're out there talking to them? 100 percent assur assurance is is really impossible to achieve. You know, I'm, I can't be there as they mine the material and follow through all the processes it goes through, all the design. You know, look at all the coding, the software, hardware, and figure out does, does somebody do you know something somewhere that's bad. So there's you know no way to know 100% for sure. You know, so there's basically a risk associated with anything you buy, and, and it's IT, food, don't want to scare anybody, but everything, right? We we all we all make risk assessments you know every day in, in our normal lives, and you know IT purchasing is you know really no different. Uh, obviously, there's you know. A, most cases, a cost with, with lowering the risk. You know, as I mentioned before, ten thousand dollars to buy a router from an authorized reseller, and five thousand dollars to get it on eBay. You know, so if you're the acquirer, what do you do? You know, you're going to do a risk benefit analysis. You know, if I was going to just use that as this is some test system, it was never going to be part of my network. Maybe I'll just buy the cheap alternative and, and roll with it. If it was going to be an integral part of, of of my secure network, I would probably look to get it from an, an authorized reseller. So we just mentioned the, the AR term there. A lot of manufacturers don't have authorized reseller programs. As we mentioned before, we have 6,500 manufacturers on soup. So as you can imagine, it's the full gamut of, of suppliers. You have your big you know, publicly traded companies and some mom and pop shops. You know, so we never pass the hard and fast rule. I, I know folks have talked about that in, in the government. Let's make everybody have to be an authorized reseller. Well, I said, what happens when a company doesn't have an authorized reseller program? Does that mean you know, they, their products can't be bought in the, in the federal government? Uh, moving down here, as you get to the bigger companies, uh, they, they authorize you know, our, our contract holders for specific sets. You know, Oracle, for example, you know, some are hardware, some are software. Then they have their Exadata products, and, and that's even a smaller set of, of, uh, of subcontract holders that are qualified to, uh, to sell those products. And as we mentioned before, 100% uh, reliant on negative connotations. Obviously, you know the larger companies. You know, if, if there's a cost associated with the authorized reseller program, it's 
smaller companies are at many times a competitive disadvantage. They, they just don't have get the money to uh, to pay several you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to become authorized, you know, or you know, move up to, to certain levels to, to play. Uh, that can lead to reduced competition. And quite honestly, at the end of the day, the decision to, to what companies you know, succeed or fail uh, isn't so much on, on the effort or skill of the employees, but how deep their pockets are. getting dinged for something there. All right, so I know we're getting close to the end here. I don't know if I can stretch it out for another 16 minutes, but I'll, I'll try to talk slower. All right. All right, for some large manufacturers, okay, Steve told me it's okay if I get on a little bit early. You know, they, they, they have a, a, you know, defined authorized reseller programming, so Cisco Gold, or as I said, Oracle says you can sell X data and, and stuff like that. So, you know, at Soup, we, we use a, a trust but verify approach. You know, so and our contract holders will tell you, you know, they have to provide a point of contact. So if, if I say I'm an authorized reseller for a company, you know, they have to provide me with, with the name of someone at that, at that company. And we're going to trust them while we verify that information. And if for some reason that verification fails, then we remove that relationship and, and mark them as a non-authorized reseller. Um, we, we do have a program. A little, called ERP, I'll talk about a couple slides here, but the, you know, one of the authorized reseller uh, functions that has to be met to be part of the or program is there has to be a, a negative connotation if you don't use the authorized reseller program. So I can hit you with another story of, of a poor customer who, who bought some items uh, from a large networking company, but they, they bought them through you know, the gray market. You know, they bought them from you know, Europe, they acquired them, installed these 10 networking products in their, in their enterprise, and life was good. And then they needed support. So they came to Soup and said, oh, we want to do an RFQ on Soup. We want to get support for these, these items because we have a, a, a need to update the firmware. So you know, sure enough, RFQ goes out. Customers notified, I'm sorry, you can't get support on those items. You know, we sh we're showing these, these serial numbers while well, valid came through improper channels, and therefore we will not support said items. So, so what happened to the customer? They have to rip out 10 functioning networking devices, purchase 10 functioning networking devices from proper channels, go through the whole process of installing, configuring, and then updating those, those items. So you know, as, 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 our, as our counsel to our government customers, understand you know, the, the rules you know, that, that of the companies that you're trying to, uh, to do business with. And as we move on down here, as we mentioned before, not all companies have authorized reseller programs. You know, so if, if that's the case, you know, and we have it's probably, probably 6,000 to 6,500 probably fall into that in that range, so probably close to 90% will be there. Uh, last point there, manufacturers, it's from time to time do authorize like a two-tier type of approach to, uh, to selling their products. So we, and I think it's mentioned here in the slide, at some point in time, uh, there is the opportunity for like a one-off authorization. And actually, it's on this slide right here. So why don't we you know, recognize it, Sue, why don't we recognize letters of authorization alone as, as, a, as a source? Well, I mean, Joanne could probably regale you with more stories th than I can, but, but just a couple that she's relayed to me. So we have some with a rubber stamp that basically says, enter, enter reseller name here. So it actually comes in from our contract holders, and it says, enter name here is authorized to resell uh, Dell products. You know, could I trust that letter as, as, as being authentic? Uh, who is authorizing it? So another, another little story. Uh, one of our, uh, our contract holders sent us a letter in. It was from the Brazil, uh, you know, I guess, outpost. Uh, of the uh, of, of the company, I'm like, eh, I'm not sure if we can really trust and you know, verify the authenticity of, of of that letter. And you know, what is the authorization for? Is it for federal? Is it for commercial? You know, what's the period of performance? You know, has it already lapsed? You know, so all, all that is is not really clear. So in our cases, as as I mentioned, we use a trust but verify. Provide us a contact at that manufacturer. We will contact you know, that person and say, is is this company authorized to resell your products? Uh, for some critical purchases, and if, if for our Sioux folks, if you're familiar with the, the art and wide strategic sourcing of GSS catalogs, 
we do require you guys to provide the LOA in addition to your uh, you know, other information, pricing and all, with regards to that. So there are time to time that we do actually you know, reach out to our contract holders, but that's in addition to and not in place of you know, the, the contact information. Oh, and of course, Joanne says, if Soup and the LOA disagree, rely on Soup. So I'll pass it along. Always rely on Soup, right? Uh, supply chain information itself is, is provided at the quote level. So every one of the 13 million CLINs on our, our contract are, you know, have an associate level of, of SCRM you know, with them. Uh, we add about 11,500 products every day. Okay, so the soup contracts are constantly you know, evolving. There are actually four levels. I might say three here. Uh, top level, you know, least level of risk is I am the manufacturer. So we, you know, soup contract holders, we have a Dell, HPE, HPI, IBM. So we do have four contract holders that actually make the products. And, and some of the smaller companies may make you know, certain you know, components or, or a small company you know, or a small, you know, maybe PCs or, or put together their own PCs. But for the most part, those four companies actually make a lot of what, what they sell. Uh, next level down from that is, is authorized reseller. And we actually split that, as we mentioned before, into two areas. I am A, authorized to sell everything from this company, or B, I'm authorized to sell you know, a subset of other companies' products. Uh, moving down from that, the, the next level of, of risk is I get it from a distributor. So as, as we talked about you know, chain of custody provenance, you know, so now it's, it went from the manufacturer to a distributor to the contract holder. So there's a third set of, of hands, at least, you know, involved in that. You know, so as, as the customer, Am I willing to accept that risk? You know, maybe the price is a little cheaper because they got it from the distributor. They can you know, pass the savings on to you, but that's a, a third chance for, for malicious tainting of, of the products. Uh, the last level is the, the dreaded unverified relationship, but once again, does not necessarily mean it's, it's bad you know, because not everyone has uh, an authorized reseller program. You know, if, if you're buying equipment maybe from a Cisco, from a Dell, from Oracle, if you're buying your, you know, your networking equipment. Uh, we did a large buy with the federal government, you know, the JRSS, Joint Regional Security Stack System. You know, that's the communication system for the entire federal government that you know, came through suit. So I'm, I'm certain that they had you know, very stringent requirements on you know, authorized resellers and, and the like for, for the, you know, communication for, for the de Department of Defense. to go here in nine minutes. Not doing too bad. So as previously mentioned, you know, we do have an EARP enterprise author or established authorized reseller program. So, so what is that? Uh, basically, we, we found 17 companies that have you know, met the requirements, central point of contact, uh, and, and most importantly, repercussions for not buying through authorized channels. You know, so they don't support the product. You can't get maintenance on the product. You know, nothing. They won't come out and service the product. So what we've done is identified those 17 companies, you know, flagged them in our database as ARP, and the short story is that you know, for those 17 companies, if our contract holder is not marked as an authorized reseller, then they are unable to quote those products on RFQ. So uh, as I mentioned before, we, we provide you know, information to the customer for every RFQ, but for these 17 companies, we've taken the additional step of preventing non-authorized resellers from even quoting their products. And I believe this is our, our last slide here. So you know, once again, when we're out, you know, when our, our teams are out meeting with our customers, what do we do? Uh, advise them to you know, base, base their decisions on risk management. And obviously, as we talked about the JRS system before, you know, your most critical systems should have you know, the most critical and most stringent requirements to have the lowest level of risk. You know, authorized reseller can, can lower that risk. ISO 20243 certification can you know, help lower that risk. Uh, know what the information means. So once again, understand the parameters of the companies you're dealing with. Do they have an authorized reseller program or not? What are the benefits of the program? What do you get with it? Uh, what happens if you, if you don't get a, a product? And will it be supported? Uh, once again, rely on the suit verification file. So once again, 
you know, just a large amount of information provided to the customer for every, every quote that comes through our system. And last but not uh, least, since, since we're here at the Open Group, consider using you know, ISO 20243 certification as, as a best value discriminator because all soup, uh, soup awards are best value determination. So you have the lowest price, you have technical you know, acceptability, as certainly you know, standards, social economic standards. You know, but if all else fails, you know, look and see if, if the company that you're dealing with is, is ISO 20043 certified. And I believe that is the end. So we got done with the six minutes to spare. So you're all welcome. Yeah. Six minutes of your day back. Steve? Oh, please have a seat. Yeah, please have a seat because you don't get off that easily. You get to choose. You see, this is part of the test. Uh, we know which one Di uh, we we know which one Joanne would choose. <coughs> there we go. That'll work. That'll work well. Thank you. <coughs> thank you very much for that. Well, well, well thank you all for, for uh, you know, allowing Soup to uh, to you know, obviously have this this co-located event and and for for the for the generous applause for for my presentation. So one of the questions that's clearly come from the. Uh, non-soup side of the audience is, what's with the duck? <laughs> we, we get the soup and the bowl, but what's, what's the duck? What's with the duck? <laughs> well, I can tell you. Ah, uh, the duck. All right, so what's with the duck? Uh, the short story of the duck is way back before my time, even before Joanne's time, strangely enough, there was a, a meeting of the founding fathers of soup. There was you know, three gentlemen that we call the founding fathers of soup. And you know, sort of like the story, it's almost like the Led Zeppelin story about you know, Keith Moon saying he'll go over like a lead balloon. So uh, you know, the, the one of the founding fathers, name is Joe Barksdale, said you know, getting this program off the ground should be as easy as making duck soup, which I hear is, is, is hard to make. I've never actually you know, made duck soup. So the duck became the mascot because of that saying you know, way back in 1993 and it stuck with us through all 26 years of, of soup. So that's, that's where the duck came from. So we are down to the, the uh, uni duck now. We started out with soup one, there was one duck. Soup two, there was two ducks. Soup three, there was three ducks in a bowl. Uh, when soup four started, there were three ducks in a bowl and a duck climbing up a ladder, but you know, our graphic artists were having a hard time fitting four ducks into a bowl. <coughs> so we went to the uni duck approach in soup four and continued it for soup five. So I, I believe he'll be our mascot moving forward. So you come to an open group event and get the really useful information. Yes. Th thank God they asked something I could answer. That was a... Okay, so we have a few questions from the audience. Remember, sl Slido is the way to, uh, to do this. Um, can you say anything, Al, about the cost? Can you comment on the cost of becoming an authorized reseller? Uh, can you comment on the cost of becoming an authorized reseller? Uh, you know, for, for who? Uh, you know, I, I wish I could, but you know, each you know, company has their own programs. Uh, some may just require some demonstration of skills. Some may require a, a level of certification for employees. Some may just say, "Give us you know, this many dollars, and you're you're certified." Right. So it depends on the individual. Yeah, the yeah and, and as I said, some companies have yes, uh, no program at all. So uh, yeah, the 6,500 companies probably have 6,500 different programs. Um, so are just U.S. companies eligible to be suppliers to Soup, or can non-U.S. companies supply? Uh, we have companies from all over the world. So a SAP, which I believe is a German company, is, is on soup. Well, we have, as Jack can attest to, several you know, Japanese-based companies, Swedish-based, UK-based companies, Swiss-based companies. Uh, now, there, there's there's no geographical restriction. I mean, you know, the U.S. government may impose some uh, some restrictions in, on on certain agencies on what countries they're allowed to buy products from, but soup itself. I mean, there are some exceptions, but they're handled on, on a local basis, and I, I would not feel comfortable you know, saying that in a public forum, but you know, so some, some security issues have arisen from certain companies. But so the, um, actually the first question that came in chronologically was, uh, since the OTTPS standard was created that you talked about, uh, has the open group seen more interest and concern over tainted products or counterfeit components, and has this changed over time? I guess that's partly for you and maybe partly for me, but... Um. 
Yeah, probably for you, maybe for Andras or Joanna or yeah. anybody here is from from you know their 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 you know, constituents, from be, 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 be they who they may, that we we've, we've heard. Uh, you know, as I said, I, I relate a few stories that have come in to us. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean they're the only ones that have ever happened. You know, sometimes the, the, the shame and dignity of, of having it happen you know, may preclude you from reaching out. Oh, I, I bought something and it was it really caused a security incident. It's probably going to be in the Washington Post before someone calls up soup and says, "Oh, by the way, we bought some <coughs> we bought some bad products." You know, from from time to time, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll hear you know, we'll, we'll get some stories. And as I said, you know, we, we we check them out, and if if we find them to be true. As I mentioned before, take the one manufacturer, we, we remove all their products in soup because of, of concerns that they could not you know, control their supply chain. Or, 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 or they may themselves have been maliciously tainting their products. Right. I mean, from, from my perspective, I've, I've always thought that um, the creation of the standard was such a significant activity in itself, starting from a collaboration between government and industry. Um, taking quite a lot of time with some very important um, organizations involved. And it got there, and, and um, I've never quite understood why it hasn't been taken up more, to be, to be honest. Um, it, and I think the answer is it needs the, as is usual with these standards, it needs the customer pull, it needs the procurement pull to, for, the, for the vendors to see the value of, of going through this. So hopefully one of the things that will happen from from your event this week is that we, we may start to see some of that but I, d I do think it's uh, anyone who looks at it <coughs> um, why why wouldn't you want some extra um, good feeling and security around your uh, uh, around the products that you're procuring so well, um, I think it depends what it costs yeah it, it, it does know, is, is, is there a cost for the good feeling is the warm and fuzzy cost more than just a warm or fuzzy you know then yeah. you might have to settle for just one or the other Talking of, is there an estimate of how much soup has saved in dollar terms? How much soup has saved? Like, in, uh, you know, strangely enough, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm also statistically inclined. I'm not sure why. So I, I do the annual numbers every year, and uh, you know, as as our soup contract holders are aware, you know, soup has been awarded best in class because in the U.S. federal government, area, so we're one of the best in class you know, programs. So as such, we have to provide you know, data to the government. So while there's no hard and fast number for every order and you know, your results may, may vary, let me just point that out here first, you know, we, we have about you know, roughly 16 to 17% you know, you know, our soup catalog price, which is the most you can uh, charge a customer. The average quote man, an order is about 16 to 17% off of that. And then there's there is uh, also a, a smaller savings of about seven to eight percent from the you know, the MSRP to the catalog price itself. So that's the you know in government terms as you know cost avoidance and cost savings. So the cost avoidance is roughly seven or eight percent, sixteen to seventeen percent of actual cost savings from catalog price to quote. And of course that varies with you know opportunity. So your ten million dollar opportunity is get much better than your I'll take one laptop please. And that one of the things we've heard from Joanne over the years is the. Uh, the way that the budget has increased for soup and the way that more agencies uh, are, are looking um, to take advantage of all the work that's gone in over the years. So right. it's, uh, it's a very well, very well regarded program. So um, well, well, we're happy. Yeah, so that's, that was part of the shame of self-promotion mm -hmm. there that, you know, you know, the 17 percent this year, maybe 10, 15 percent the last few years before that. So Al, we're going to leave it there and move on. We've got the big set of zeros in front oh, of us. Oh, the big set so of zeros uh, in front of me. Oh. So we need, to, we need to move on. But Just so I was getting comfortable. Thank you very much for your presentation. Oh, well, thank you for having us. Entertaining.